Now, following the report into equality in cricket and with Wimbledon starting on Monday, the hot topic of conversation is the gender pay gap in sport. Wimbledon have already equalised prize money between men and women, yet with men playing more sets than women? Does this seem fair? Mm. I'm not so sure. Mm. Uh, joining us now to discuss this is journalist Peter Lloyd. So there you go. There's a question from Phil. Uh, <laughs> is it fair, particularly if women aren't playing the same number of sets as men, but should we be equalising pay across the board? Um, well, first of all, Phil, I love your work. I'm a bit of a fan. And Esther, fellow Liverpoolian, represent. Love it. What a great start to the morning. Um, <laughs> on... On the basis that should, should men and women be paid the same in sport, uh, on the basis that women are female, no, with all due respect, being female is not a skill, it's not an achievement, uh, it doesn't deserve any financial reward. And last time I checked, sport and financial reward for sport was based on skill and excellence. Now that is the, that is the calculus which should be made when sportsmen's salaries or sportswomen's salaries are being decided and this whole argument is so basic it's a real example of basic bitchery if you don't mind me saying so early in the morning i mean i've got to give a shout I, out to the to the women football players though something men haven't been able to do for ages is win the sort of the euros and we did didn't we we did well didn't we in the football yeah i mean they did do pretty well but let's face it the ball was pretty low um, women's football is literally in a different league compared to men's. And that is why it's not comparing like with like. If you look at FIFA, for example, that generated something nearly, nearly £8 billion in the last three years. Women's football doesn't even touch the sides of that. In fact, men's football subsidises quite heavily women's football. OK, and this so that's a money matter, that, that, a money matter. But just, just let me say, this argument that women and men should be paid the same, OK, but which men? Men aren't paid the same even within the same football team. So what are they talking about? Which men? Yeah. Fair but, but point, P fair point. Peter, when you said it was about skill... Um, I just want to question that a second because, you know, w Wimbledon, they have equal pay at Wimbledon. Um, and obviously, we all know that I think when I think it was one of the Williams sisters played against a very lowly ranked man, the man still won, even though it was rated 100 and something in the world. So probably because of physical differences, men will a, a top man will beat a top woman at, at tennis. But surely the, the key thing here is that Wimbledon... The final, for example, is a sellout, whether it's the men's final or the women's final. So if it's a sellout, irrespective of who, whether it's men or women playing, surely they should both benefit equally financially from the fact that the, the ticket sales are exactly the same. Right. I mean, I obviously wouldn't want anybody to be unfairly discriminated against. But for men and women to be paid the exact same, the variables have to be exactly the same. And as you pointed out at the beginning of this segment, Wimbledon is a prime example of feminism gone off the rails because they equalise the pay, but they expect men to work harder and longer matches. Men have got to perform best of five sets. Women only have to do best of three sets. That is not equal pay for equal work. Mm. Per game, women are earning more money. That is sexism. And I know you have Sharon Davis on the show. Um, she's very vocal about her opinions when it comes to men and women in sport. Why do I, need, why do I never hear women like Sharon Davis talk about this obvious, glaring example? What we're going to ask well, Peter, your the wish, Peter, your wish has come true. We're going to ask much her indeed. that, and you've made some because very good pragmatic points. We're, 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 so uh, we're joined now by Olympic medalist and author of the new book, Unfair Play, Sharon Davis, MBE. Uh, Sharon, you were probably hearing what Peter had to say there. What, 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 do you, what do you make of this this row about whether or not men and women sports people should be paid exactly the same? Um, it's not cut and dry, is it? And I do understand some of his points. I take massive offence to the point where he talks about skill. I would say that the women's game was very, very skillful. You know, they had a, a, the largest football audience of the whole of last year, so people wanted to watch it. Um, the pay gap is absolutely massive. I've got a lovely quote here, which is from the FA way back in 1922 when they banned women from playing football. It said the FA has uh, had a consultation. Complaints have been made to the football being played by women. Council felt it was impelled to express upon your opinions and substantially would ban women's football and it was not encouraged. Now, for 51 years, women were not allowed to play football because men were in charge of it. 
That's the same as men have been in charge of the IOC. You know, football wasn't in the Olympic Games until 96. Um, we need to support them to grow the women's game because obviously girls want to do it. Physically, we are different. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes down to tennis, I agree. I absolutely agree. Women should play five sets. You know, oh, and then in well, swimming, we've worked, I, really, I think, absolutely, I, we've worked really hard to get equal events at the Olympic Games for swimming, and now we have that. I, so I, I, we I'm going to point to Sharon there, because I think, in a way, I think you're spot on, Sharon, and I think it makes it fairer and more equal, and it doesn't look as if you're somehow trying to overcompensate the women. I think that would be well, a fair judgment. Let, let, me, let me argue against myself, though, <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> Because I've been, I've made that point myself many times, but I'm, I, I'm going to argue against myself because I thought you made a very good point about. It saves about, me doing it, Phil. Yeah. Saves me doing you it. Made a, you made a good point about <laughs> skill because I, I guess the argument, the other argument against that is that in tennis, I mean, I'm not a massive, you know, I watch all sport, but I'm not. Tennis wouldn't be my first choice, but for my observation, <sighs> the. The, um, I'll do that for you, Sharon. <laughs> the, my observation in the men's game. The, 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 the men wangs it down at about 150 miles an hour. The person on the other side of the net doesn't even see it, and that's the end of the point. And then they, they, they go on yeah. and repeat that every, every single... Whereas in the women's game, you get much longer rallies because they don't have that same physical strength on the surface. It's a different game, isn't it? You get that's much longer point. rallies. And it's so the same there is... as football, really, to a degree. It's a different game, you know. It, and that power makes a big difference. Since that in football, it's about 50%. Males kick 50% harder than, than females kick. So that power that comes from the biology that we have as, as females means that we have a different kind of skill set. Um, in swimming, I've always felt that there's been great parody. You know, we've had a men's race and a women's race. It's been at the Olympic Games. The cameras are on us both at the same time. And we alternate with our medal ceremonies, et cetera, et cetera. Same with track and field. It's in sports where you've got men's leagues and women's leagues and you've got big history and huge amounts of money. I mean, let's be very honest. Take Chelsea. You know, Chelsea's women's is a much more successful team with results than, than Chelsea men's. However, one of the Chelsea men's team, we could pay for the whole of the women's team probably 10 times over. And I think that's you know, what... There is ridiculous non-parity. And that's the point Peter brought up, really, is where the money's coming from, and should that go be fairly attributed to the men and women? But before you get before you go, Sharon, tell tell us about your book. Yeah. Tell us about your book that you've written. So, so the book is a history of the battles of women's sport, really. You know, and talking about things like um, one percent of um, of the sponsorship dollar in America, and it's pretty much the same in the UK, goes to women in sport. Four percent of the airtime. So if we can't see it, we can't be it, all right? So part of it is the media trying to promote it. Part of it is big sporting bodies that have, that have historically been very misogynistic, been run by men, and are still primarily run by men in lots of cases, going, okay, how do we help to build the women's game? Here's a really good example. So my daughter was working for, for Guinness during... Um, during the recent Six Nations, she was working for a company. And she was obviously doing placing PR for the men's and she had no problem. She could place it a dozen times a day. When she had to do exactly the same for the women's teams, the only media we're interested in was how difficult it was to judge being, you know, juggle being a mum or where you were going to get your hair done and what makeup you were wearing. Now, so we need to get the media to talk about the sport and the skill and the training. And those rugby girls wanted to talk about that. They didn't want to talk about their hairdressers. But, you know, that is what happens. So the book is a combination of all sorts of things. It talks about the East German era, which was obviously what I lived through and why I'm so vocal now about trying to fight for spare, fair sport for females. It talks about all the science with regards to the transgender debate. But it also talks about the you know, historical unbiased problems that, that women have had in sport and, and the ongoing problems that we have in sport. And you think that we're getting better parody, but in lots of ways we're not. You know, we get maybe better appearance of football and rugby and cricket. But when it comes to a lot of the other sports, if I said to you now, could you please name me the best female swimmer in the UK presently? Not sure any of you could do it. No, and I, it's a lady I, named, I, yeah, it's a lady I, called Freya Anderson who, who won six medals at last year's European Championships. And we have two British Olympic gold medalist swimmers, females. The mixed medley this, relay. Again, I, I'm going to say name it. Thank you for all that you do mm. to champion women in sports. Oh, that's OK. Thank and, you. <laughs> and good luck with the book. Good luck. And I also want to say, don't Thanks. think it's only swimmers or rugby players or football, female footballers they ask about her. Can I tell you, the same conversation goes on with journalists too, women in politics as well. Not can we talk about policy, but where do you get your hair blow dried? You're quite right. It's something that the, all, all the media's got to get away from and actually talk about what the person does. Thank you.